Today's video is going to be about one of my most favorite heat tolerant flowers, the Gumfrina. Gumfrina globosa, otherwise known as globe amaranth, is going to be one of your go-to plants, especially if you live in hot or dry climates. I'm going to show you a complete growth cycle for them, including their value as a cut flower and as a dried flower. Last time we were in the double strip, I had poppies and bachelor's button filling the area. Of course, those are both annuals, and their time had come to leave. So I worked to clear out the bed, and what I was left with were several rubecchia that had hopped over from the main garden bed. Does anyone else really have a very difficult time removing flowers that recede? I just feel like they chose that spot, and I'm not going to get involved. So I kept them there for now, as it was better than a bare patch of dirt. It looked a little bizarre, but my gardening efforts are really driven by my love for pollinators, and they don't really care what it looks like, as long as there's flowers. I had to really think about what would do well here. I didn't want to use any perennials, because I plan to reseed this area with poppies again, as I enjoyed it so much this spring. So I worked to clear out the bed and mix in compost, as I normally do, since amending clay soil is an ongoing process. So these were my requirements. I wanted an annual with cut flower potential that can handle the heat of the summer, clay soil, no irrigation, no rain really, and eight hours plus of direct sun. And literally only me and a hose every couple of days. Enter Gomfrina. I remembered how well they did last year in the garden, especially during the hottest parts of the summer, and I decided to buy a pack of seeds online. I'll put the link to the seeds I purchased in the description, but the company is called Outside Pride. I went with this brand because the price was good, they came in a packet of a thousand, they were a single color instead of a mix, and also, they're a really nice shade of pink, or what they call salmon. So the plan was to sow directly into the devil strip. I watered the space before sowing the seeds so that they wouldn't float away. Once sown, I made sure not to cover the seed, as they need light to germinate. I tried to follow the directions on the label as best as I could. We'll see if I succeeded. And then I press the seeds into the soil. It's possible I may have screwed up the seeding process right here, but the tag did say to press the seed into the soil. Alas. Because I'm a neurotic Virgo and I prepare backup plans, I also seeded several trays. Whether I would need these was unclear. I thought, if anything, I could use these extra plants to fill in any open areas. I kept the devil strip moist, and I would check from time to time to see if there were any developments. Was that seedling my first gomfrina? Or was it a bachelor button that reseeded itself? Or was it simply a weed? Meanwhile, germination was quick in these trays. I had them in my grow tent inside, which I will feature more as I prepare for the next season of seed growing videos. The seedlings developed their cotyledon first which are the embryonic leaves. These leaves are the very first to appear. The second set of leaves are the true leaves. Back in the devil strip, I still didn't notice any gomfrina seedlings coming up. Maybe it was too hot, too dry, or did the birds eat the seeds? I just don't know. But it's a good reminder to have backup plans. I watered the gomfrina trays with seaweed water and a weak fertilizer with balanced NPK numbers to develop both foliar growth 
and future flowers. They can run quickly out of energy in such tight quarters, so I find it's helpful to feed them as you transition them to their forever soil. I usually keep the clamshell top on as they're germinating so they don't dry out, but it also has the potential to create mold because of limited ventilation. Generally, in my experience, it hasn't been that big of a deal, but it can lead to a fungal disease called damping off. So I knew I needed to get them in the devil strip. It was time to plant out the tray grown seedlings. As it was clear, the directly sown seeds were not germinating. These trays are awesome because each seedling is nicely packaged and ready for planting. You don't even disturb the soil getting them out, which is great. And I'll put a link to the trays also in the description. Once planted, the gomfrina really took off. Unfortunately, so did the weeds. I have a lot of this nut sedge weed, and upon researching, I found out pulling has very limited success with this particular weed. So in the future, I will be trying to figure out what possible options there are, one being herbicides. And if you know me, I stay far away from herbicides, primarily because of my love for pollinators. But as I read more about this weed, I'm discovering how a combination of methods are necessary to get rid of it. Suggestions on how to remove it are greatly appreciated. But back to why we're here. The young plants began to take shape and blend into the reseeded Rubecchia. and the first blooms began to arrive. One thing I forgot about Gomfrina is that their stems are beautifully vibrant and ornamental. They remind me of red twig dogwood. And so we have further growth and more of those pink flowers to appreciate. The flowers are actually called bracts. They are not true flowers, but rather act as modified leaves to attract pollinators. This is why they're excellent dried flowers, or dried bracts. That's because you're really drying modified leaves. The true flowers are actually quite small. They are tiny, yellow, star-shaped flowers that can be seen up close, resembling a sort of tube-like structure. Luckily for them, the bracts draw in the pollinators where they quickly find the actual flowers. Bumblebees in particular went nuts over them, especially in the morning, dotting between each flower. These are absolutely bee magnets. As it filled in, had the effect I wanted, a saturation of airy pink pom-poms to bring in color and smiles to the neighborhood. And yes, smiles of all kinds. I water the area roughly every two days. This is during the hottest part of our summer. Would they have liked every day? Definitely. 
But I also try to be reasonable about water consumption and try to push the limits. These are framed as drought tolerant flowers after all. I also thought it was funny that there was a single red gumfrina in the sea of pink. And you can actually see the yellow true flowers much better here. Seed growing for me is the best way I learn about plants. You follow them from the very beginning of their journey, all the way to the very end when you're pulling out their tired stems. It can be hard when things don't go right, but that's the point. You learn what works and what doesn't. Your garden won't always look amazing, especially during the summer. But there are those brief moments when the flowers catch the light and you realize all that work to get them to this point was worth it. But as much as I give to them, they've given me so much more in return, especially during this socially isolating period. Even the self-seeded Rubecchia were a joy to greet, and the pollinators didn't mind them either. It's surprising how much calmer I feel after checking up on them at the end of the day. It's like visiting an old friend. But as mentioned, these make excellent cut flowers, so we're going to do just that. I had noticed several starting to hang over the curb. As part of their maintenance, I wanted to trim them back a bit. And what a better opportunity to bring them inside and enjoy. All right, so here is our haul. I'm removing excess foliage and generally cleaning up the stems. Because the stems were hanging off the curb, they became kind of curved. So it took a while to cut them into straight stems and remove those curved parts. I separated smaller stems on the side so I could hang some to dry.
Normally, you'll want to hang them upside down in a dry, dark place, but I couldn't resist putting them on display already. And there you go, my pink gomfrina in a pink vase I made. There's nothing better than being a part of the whole process, and I thank you for following along. I hope I've inspired you to try this wonderful cut flower. Do you have experiences with it? Tell me in the comments below. These videos take a lot of work and time to put together, so if you enjoyed this video and you want more content, the best way to make this happen is to like, subscribe, and to share this video so that the YouTube algorithm gods shine upon me. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. And that was actually Luna at my door trying to get in. Oops. <laughs>